perspective. Um, so um, you might have seen the other videos. We've done quite a few now. We've done around flowers and we've even done some objects from in the home. Um, we tend to just use pencils and really um, easily obtain materials. But tonight I'm just going to push it a little bit further and use some watercolours. Um, but please feel free. Um, there's going to be elements of tonight where you can draw with pencil. Or if you just want to explore with me, that would be great. Um, don't forget that you can always add your designs. It'd be fantastic for me to see them at Neural Champions on Twitter or on Instagram. Um, and I hope you enjoy the session. Um, well, tonight, as I say, we're going to be drawing trees, but we're really going to be looking at how um, they're made up because I think it's always really difficult when you draw something so complicated as a tree where it's got lots of different elements to it. So lots of leaves and colour and depth and shapes and it becomes almost impossible to sort of see that and how that's made up. So I'm going to really break it down tonight and we're going to have lots of fun looking at the um, patterns and the shadows and the shapes, colours that we can see. So hopefully next time you see a tree, you'll feel totally courageous that you'll just go at it and you'll be able to draw it um, with lots of confidence. Okay, so I've got a little setup here. I've got um, a pencil that's got an eraser on the end. I've kept hold of my, if anybody watched the um, uh, video from last week, my twigs have been using these all week as well. And these were just something that I used last week to dip them in a little bit of water and ink or watercolor. Any type of paint really would work and would do great with that. Um, so I've been carrying on painting with them. I've just got a piece of paper um, watercolour palettes and some postgres reference. It was interesting really, I had a conversation with somebody last week and they said that using reference photographs was cheating, but I absolutely disagree with all that. I think you need to look at references um, and photographs as much as possible and if not the real thing. Um, so please don't feel for it, feel that you, you don't use these uh, images because it's absolutely fundamental to getting um, practicing and to um, building up your skills. So I'm just gonna turn my uh, screen round so that you can see my little setup here. So hopefully you can see, yeah, lovely that tree there. And what I've done is I've split, this is a piece of paper out of um, a watercolor sketch pad as well. So. This, I think, cost me about £12 for about 40 sheets of paper. It's, it's massive. It's a A1. Um, so I tend to split these down. I think it's more cost effective that way, especially if you want to get really good quality paper. It's a, a cheaper alternative than buying um, just pages. So I've um, picked this lovely tree. I'm not too sure even what it is, which is a terrible start, I know. But I just really liked it because of the different colours. We've got these lovely um, pale little blossoms on it, these um, cream coloured blossoms. We've got lovely shape to the tree. And we're just gonna, um, first of all, explore the different types of greens that we can see. And now if you have got coloured pencils, don't forget that you can always overlap these as you colour them. These are some um, Faber-Castell pencils that I've got. I've had them a really long time and they're definitely worth investing in. Um, but you can put down your lightest colour first and your darkest colour over the top of them. Um, if you do want to explore that as well. Uh, this is a watercolour, I'm so sorry how dirty it is, but it's used and it's well loved. It's Winsor Newton. Um, and again, it's not too expensive, but they are really good quality watercolours. And I think that if you was going to um, get serious about any of this, it would be definitely worth um, investing in. So, and it's a nice travel size, so you can um, paint while you're outside too. So I've just got a pot of water and, and just any sort of small paintbrush would do. And what I'm going to start doing is picking out some of the colours that we can see here. And this is what I'd love you to do too. So we can see that there's lots of dark greens, there's some really deep colours, and then we move on to some lighter greens. And it's just really to get us to observe that actually you know, all leaves on the tree aren't the same and how do we create this quite easily? So what I love doing is swatching different colours and this is a really nice um, task for you to do with anything. You can do it with things around the home, you can do it with flowers, you can do it with pretty much anything um, really that you see, looking at just different colours. What's also nice is um, picking something out of a book, um, an image out of a book. So 
I've got one here, say for example, um, this one, and just swatching the colours that you can see at the side, it's a really mindfulness way of um, getting into your work. So um, trying to match these colours will be really useful um, practice to actually look and observe colours, colours correctly. Something that you can practice and have fun with, there's no pressure, you just keep developing. So I'll show you my palette as I go and I'm just going to pick up on the darkest colours first. Um, no, ordinarily when I'm working uh, with colour and watercolours and paints, what I tend to do is, is go for the lighter colours to put down first, just so that we can build on top of that. Um, but I think it's really useful to have a play. And as I'm going, it's really handy, as I say, because I've got my reference right next to my watercolours, which is really good. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop down a little bit of colour, just to see how I can match these tones. Or even darker, this lovely colour. And just take your time, go nice and slow. Keep checking, keep looking, experimenting with the different colours that you can see. And it might take a while um, to get used to getting some of these accurate. And you can get into lots of colour theory and they talk about warm colours and cool colours. But, you know, just to have a little bit of fun. We're not writing a, a paper on it or anything like that. We don't need to research it so much. But if you are interested, there's lots of information you can find out about that too. And it's amazing how many different types of greens that you can find just on one tree. So I'm really happy with my dark tones. My darkest tone I think is great. Um, and as I'm going, I'm remembering how I'm mixing these two. So um, I know exactly what brought me to this colour. But if you wanted um, to help yourself, you could even add what types of greens that you added together and just write a little um, a little key underneath would be helpful. Some things that I do, especially if I've got a big project and I know it's going to last me a few days, then it's really useful to do that. Um, so I, I know when I come back to it, I've not totally forgot, because if you're anything like me, I've got a shocking memory. So I'm just going to go into like my lighter colours now. Some of the greens have a little bit more yellow in. And you don't need to be really perfect with any of this stuff. It's just literally noting down colours. I would say this is probably a, maybe a little bit too light. Just add a little bit more to that. That's better. And keep going and exploring until you've really got something that you're happy. And all this is doing is training your mind to really observe the different elements before we start actually drawing the tree or drawing our object. And then we've got these really, really light tones here, all very pale, almost ashy sort of greens. I'd say I'm quite happy with those 10 little colours. And again, it's really, these are really nice, especially if you're in, you might be going to high school or you could be going from high school to college or college to university. These are great little portfolio fillers. And so if you wanted to look at some of the studies that you've, you've done, these are great to look back on and put in your portfolio so they can see like your workings out as if it's like maths really. And so now what I'm going to focus on, now I've really studied some of the colours that I can see, is I'm going to focus on the shapes of the leaves that I can see in front of me too, just to get a nice feel. So I've just got a, a normal pencil, um, a HB pencil, and I'm just really observing some of the shapes that I can pick out of the leaves. So I'm just starting here. 
And again, this is really good. We're getting to know the tree, if you like. We're getting to know um, its characteristics. We're getting to know what its leaves are like, how they fall. So you might see, you know, you might have a, another little reference that you prefer in front of you now. So you don't have to draw this one. You can pick up something totally different. And for those that were here for the, the little plant, um, session that I did we know wobbly lines are our favorite friend when it comes to drawing plants and nothing too perfect and again we're just getting to know some of these shapes so does that hang down below the blossom at the side how do they all fit together and just explore it at your own pace pick a spot that you like and go for it so I'm looking they've all got these really pointed edges to it. This sort of heart shape, this, this sort of squashed heart shape, which is really nice. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as I say, these are only little studies. You know, and that's important to know as well, when we're drawing or painting or doing anything like that, you don't, there's no rule to say you have to actually draw the whole thing. We can pick bits that we like, we can crop and we can change. Just as if you was changing a photograph on your phone, you know, cropping bits off sections out of it. It's exactly what we're doing. So now I'm getting to know this a little bit more. I've never drawn this particular image before. What I'm looking at is that there's this lovely little layered element to the leaves, quite random, but they all point down. Are quite curved and what been, might be nice is for you to pop a little bit of colour on there too just to give you that, that sense of what's happening where the dark areas are Not, no particular order as I say this is just a rough little guide for us We start to build up a scene and a picture that people can see. And as I'm painting watercolour, I'm not letting anything dry. I'm working quite fast. You know, it doesn't always have to be so neat and tidy, and particularly not in my style. I think some people might think it's laziness, but it's just the way I love to work. I like to get it down quickly. I like to move on to the next thing. I'm quite impatient when I'm painting or drawing. So we've got our dark tones on now. We're gonna to go a bit lighter towards this area here. And we've got some really dark areas that we can touch up as well. I'm just mixing a little bit of green and some black. And just filling in behind, making the others stand out, move forward. What about that depth? As soon as I start on this channel, I feel so peaceful and calm, just painting away. Looking at what I'm doing, really getting into images. Okay, a little section there for me. My buds, my blossoms. And again, we can always revisit any of this and we can come back if it's a little bit too wet for us to continue on. And we can add even darker tones. And um, a tip that somebody's um, showed me when I was in uni was that if we wanted to create a shadow in green, we'd use its opposite colour. So its opposite colour is red. So if you added red to green, you'd get brown, but you'd also get the same shade as you needed. Just a little tip. We'll go nice and dark now. 
and again this is what surfaces when you look at it from a distance or up close are these little areas and we started off well because we looked at it properly we researched our colors we really um, tried to match them accurately but again we've got a sense of freedom as we paint does it always have to be as it looks on the reference and so the final little bit for me on here that I would look at doing are these little blossoms and see how I can create these, make these come alive a little bit. And we've got darker tones here too. Add a little bit there. And if you want to go lighter with watercolours, we add water um, so we can bring some of this out. And I think they really are my favourite thing to paint with just because they're so versatile and because if you're messy like me and you get them anywhere, you can easily wipe them off. So you don't have to feel so worried. I've lost many an item of clothing to an acrylic paint. So lovely. So we've got this great sort of mirrored image of what we've just been looking at. So before we carry on and draw anything big, um, before we draw it in its hole, I want to move on to um, another one, which I think will be really nice and challenging for us. And again, what we're going to start off by doing is find some of the colours. So I love cherry blossoms um, just because of how vibrant they are. Um, they signify quite a lot of things around growth and spring. And they're just really beautiful. And I think that if you're lucky enough to live anywhere that's got them, it's a fantastic um, colour to add to the flow when they start shedding. So I'm going to go straight in with some of the cherry blossom colours and some lovely deep reds and lush pinks and quite purpley tones too and again if you've got colour pencils you can do it with those pick out the colours you don't have to have watercolours with you And we've still got lots of little bits of green, if you can see. Lots of nice little flashes of green in there too. So kind of a, a light tone. And there's a really dark green. Just on the edge of the leaves. And this takes practice and it takes patience. So keep at it, set yourself, you know, maybe two or three things to do a day. So I think, you know, I'm going to tackle two trees today. I'm going to really focus on getting the colours right, you know, these types of things. So I'm just doing the nice little pinkish tones in here. I love that sound of just the water mixing, the paintbrush going in. Really pretty colours. Um, and then we've got the, the brown of the tree. So really, I would say this is like a burnt umber colour. It's light brown. And keep mixing, keep playing. You know, and if you're not happy with the colour that goes down, you can just make a cross it out later on and Remember, that's not one that you would like to use. So 
just got a few more colours this time. I think that's down to really the, the type of the tree. So again, now in this um, next section, I'm just going to draw um, some of the shapes that I can see and just come really familiarised. These really frilly edges of the blossom, quite beautiful. Um, and if you remember, if you did watch our flower video, you can even put some guidelines in first. That might help you. And now really with this tree, because it's not got so many branches, uh, so many leaves, and you can see the branches, we can start exploring actually the structure of the tree in terms of its branches rather than just its leaves. So I'm just picking up on how it forms. And you can see that there's two main branches here. And if you're not got, if you want, you're not got a um, um, oh, that's really nice. Thank you. If you've not got um, a, a normal pencil, or if you want to just draw in coloured pencil, that'd be lovely. You know, to um, add a bit of colour, and it'll seem a little bit more realistic when you come to add on the watercolours. Oh, thank you very much for your comments. Please feel free to keep adding them. Or even if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them too. We're in this together, our creative adventure. You know, and we're just picking out some, I mean, we don't have to draw all of it again. We're just becoming familiarised with this type of tree. We're just really thinking about the little elements that make this a cherry blossom tree. We're just going to add in some more blossoms. You can see my lines are quite loose. There's not a lot of detail going in that because hopefully the colour she'll really pick up on some of that um, and help us to make it look even more realistic. And again, these are just the building blocks. All this practice is really just the building blocks for us to flourish and be more confident and create real brave, amazing things that we might not necessarily have tackled before. But because we've got, you know, this experience. And you know, I'm never happy with everything. I always want to do a little bit more. I think that's why it's such an easy thing to get, to forget the time in art because I'm just constantly <laughs> exploring new things. So lovely. So I've got my, I can't wait to get into this blossom colour. Um, maybe a bit dark. Game, we're just learning as we go, learning as we go. And we can layer on. And really look for the later. And um, another tip that I always got taught was if you want to find the darker tones, the darker colours, then squint. They'll squint and then you'll be able to see where the darker tones are in the image that you're looking at or whatever it is that you might be studying or drawing. It's nice really. There's these little flecks of tone. 
pattern. And the way I'm using my brush is just really light, just like, um, as I describe to my students, just like tickling the page. And if you had a feather, you're just tickling it nice and light, as if you was painting a something really delicate, like a little egg or something like that. A bit dark in here. So again, there's lots of detail in this. We're just getting to know. I'll add in some water to make it lighter. Totally fill. And what I'm looking at is that they're growing, you know, maybe bunches of six or seven around the, the tree. I can see that they grow together. I can see that they've all got sort of green buds with them. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get quite impatient if, it, you know, I realise, I'm just going to have this stuff in. So it's drinking. But I realise that, you know, it doesn't always, it takes patience and that can be a really difficult step when you're painting. Because it's all about building layers. I mean, I suppose it doesn't have to be, um, but I think when you're studying something for the first time, it's really important to try and at least, you know, put more effort into looking at what it actually is rather than just using our creativity. And as I'm looking at this, I can see that the left hand of the, the trees are darker. Got all these really thin, so you can hardly any pressure to put some of these thin weaving branches together. Almost grow horizontally straight out of the tree. Keep playing. Interesting to see what you found so far. I like having a little piece of tissue or whatever with me so I can get rid of some of the the watercolour if I need to as well, if it might have gone on a little bit too dark. Happy to do that. So I'm just looking at the shapes, adding those in. I think I'm quite happy with this so far. Another really good tip that my tutor always taught me was, you know, if it's a one side, come back to it later if you're not too sure what it needs, you're not too happy with it. Fab. So we've done two trees now. And I'm going to move on to this one. I just thought this was a little bit of fun. It's 
quite nice um very dark i love the contrast between the differences between that real bright orange um so we've got a fruit tree let's start off with this let's just move it further up actually so you can see And the thing is, when you start collecting all these art materials, is you never have enough room for some reason. Well, I say for some reason, but my family could definitely tell you why. <laughs> Exploring with too many materials. A nice yellow, we've got a nice orange in it, but if we look at the side of these fruits, What's really interesting is we can capture some of this as well. So this would be like the, the mid tone what I've just put down, but we've got a real dark, almost sort of like um, burgundy color as well as a really nice light orange color too. Um, you know, so it's important that we, as I say, really focus on on looking at what's in front of us. Maybe not so yellow. And these greens are so deep and dark and luxurious. We've got a, a real different coloured leaf to what we've done before. And that was mainly why I'd pick these really, just to show you how much variety there is when we talk about the subject. Oh, I love that. Little trend going on in the anybody that's interested in TV design around you know really dark colours that are going up on the walls. So this um a light colour is just a nod to the tips of some of these uh, bright, um leaves where the light is just catching them, illuminating them. And then we need to go for our darkest, almost, almost black. If I do this quite thinly, this black, you can actually see that it's got a lot of um, blue or green in it. Or should I say blue and green? And I think mixing uh, black tones, grey tones is one of my favourite things actually. Uh, lots of different variations and just using it straight out of the, the tube. Only very subtle differences but again it just adds that depth, that really um, realistic way of painting. Which we can do sometimes, you know. So there's my palette again not as many colours as the cherry blossom and back to our pencil so these are lovely sort of overly shaped leaves with a really pointy edge to them they curl and they twist and bend on the tree Almost reminds me of uh, like a bay leaf. For those of you who are either into your cooking or your gardening, we've got these lovely plump. I mean, I think they look like oranges, but I don't think they are. All my um, images as well are from Pinterest. I love shopping on Pinterest, as I say. I always find lots of images on there. to use, really good resource. And you can create, for those who've never used it before, little boards. So if you think I'm gonna challenge myself this week and I'm gonna draw, you know, some flowers or whatever, you can save some images as you read through. And when you finally got time to maybe sit down, go back to it then, that's what I tend to do.
And again, as I'm drawing this, you know, it's so different to our three, um, our other two images, this third image. All sorts of variations, isn't there? I'm just gonna, what I'm doing is really concentrating on the shapes that I can see. Now, unlike the tree that we did first, these leaves put in every different direction. There's no sort of pattern or rule or reasoning to them. It's quite free and energetic in the way they grow. And what I've noticed is they do come from or seem to grow from where the fruit is hanging. So if you notice here, then there's this patch of leaves here, and these patch of leaves growing from it. It's quite interesting. But again, we're just getting to know it. So. Reminds me of that nursery rhyme, how does your garden grow? I had a couple of questions last week from some of my students about holding the pencil too. So don't forget, nice and loose when you're holding the pencil and you're drawing. And allow that movement to come from your shoulder. Allow you to, yourself to have full control. I've pretty much got this shape. And let's start adding some of our colours that we've mixed. This is a really interesting colour. I, I just love the vibrancy of the oranges next to. Yeah, some of this. This bright yellow, bright orange that you can see. No, this almost looks black. But it's just got a lovely tinge of green. Okay, shapes. And again, you can, you know, always keep it as a sketch. You don't have to add colour to each one of them. This, this would be a lovely little worksheet, as I say, for a portfolio, or if you're thinking of studying art in school, maybe. It'd be great for you to, or college, it'd be great to show a range of skills that you've got by adding this together and they can see your colour mixing, they can see how you've formulated, how you've put together. It's really interesting image. And again, don't forget if you're using pencil, blend them over each other, even if you're using HB pencils or pens, you know, if you had a bit of shading or was it a bit of cross hatching to create that darkness and that depth? If you're drawing along with us. And it's at this stage, you get excited because I think I can't wait to add that pop of yellow and orange, don't know what's it going to look like, I'm so excited. Sounds very silly, doesn't it? It's the small things. So, you know, at this point, we're not looking for anything to be absolutely perfect. We're all learning. Again, it's the first time I've ever drawn anything like 
this this variety of tree before to try to practice something. Are we ready for the orange? Oh, I like it. I like it. It's going good. Just add that middle tone first. And then we'll add some yellow to lighten that up. And we can see on here again, if we squint that the sun's or the light source is coming from this direction, which is really interesting. Something to be aware of. I don't know where your lights in your dark, darker areas are. Pick one of those off that tree now. And again, if you've not got, a, a, you know, lots of colour, then you can always uh, use more water. So let's see what we've done so far. So let's have a little recap. So this is our first one. And we've captured the colours in here. These are the tones that we found. These are the colours. Our next one, a blossom tree, lovely pinks. White. I'm looking at this now, it's dried as well. And this is what watercolour tends to do. Um, but it'll be it'll go quite light. So where you think you've applied, you know, a lot of colour actually benefit from, you know. A darker tone, but you can play around a more time than me to um, continue with this after. Oh, I love that one. And then we've got um, our lovely little fruit tree. So we've got one more um, before, let's just do a time check. Mm. Yeah, I think we will, I think we'll do this last one um, and then we'll, um, for the last 10 minutes, do uh, the structure and look at that. So um, this is really a sort of a barren uh, tree, isn't it? It's not got very much um, in the way of foliage. But what it has got are these really beautiful sort of ruby berries that are maybe quite difficult to see there. Um, but these really dark sort of red, even like a more pinky red than this. Yeah, see the difference between those two. This one is probably more accurate. I don't know where the time goes. Oh. Mm, I love that. It's rich. Burnt in the colour. Reminds me of school uniform actually. And then we've got this lovely purpley tone on the branch um, and the trunk, so which is really interesting. So purple is red and blue. So if we mix that into a darker colour, we've got the basis of a really nice match. Might just need tweaking. Oh, yes. And a day, you know, you can do this um, however many times you need to, just to really... understand what you're looking at, what the colours are. Don't need anything fancy like a colour wheel, just practising on, this is really useful enough. Um, but again, if you want to go one step further and you want to get a little bit more serious about your art maybe, 
it's not just relaxation for you anymore, as I say, you might want to be doing a portfolio or whatever it might be. Um, the puller wheel is really good investment. So that's this colour is this really light colour that's shining just on the edge of this tree here, right at the top as well. Very light. So I'm probably going to leave it at that for the colours. Can't really see much more. So this is a really interesting shaped tree. You can see how it's grown over the years. And the way in which I've tackled this is by just drawing pencil lines in first where it actually, the direction it actually grows in um, and then adding some more depth to it later on. So that I can don't get lost in the size of things, the, you know, this being thicker, this is thinner. So just as getting to know this tree, I'm just going to flesh out the shapes and the branches that I can see. Think of that negative space too. So the space here, how accurate is that? And does that look right? It's a good way to correct some of your work. And I think that's all art is, is backwards and forwards, correcting things, changing things around, experimenting. I think, you know, it's a really, really resilient hobby need to be resilient to do pick up your skills absolutely but you know really just build up your courage to try new things okay so we've got this really is our basis here this is probably a bit too far up actually now. Yeah, keep going and altering. This branch right here. So the first tip really is to, when you're actually drawing, foundations of the trees to just draw their skeleton lines and then flesh them out so add around okay so again we're gonna have a splash of color just gonna squint our eyes and see what's where adding these dark tones mainly to the right hand side of the tree again it looks like the light is coming from the left hand side purpley colour that mixed
keep observing, looking where dark tones go. I think I've run out a little bit of room here, but I think to do the berries, you know, very small little taps. No, I don't know this detail. Kind of reflect those over here. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I'm just stippling with the brush, it's nice little effects. And again, I'm just learning that, you know, they grow up in the branches and then they spread out quite sporadically really. There's no rhyme or reason to these. Just add a few little bits. Fab, so we have got all four now. And great work if you got to this point and if you've used um, cross hatching or if you've used anything like that absolutely fantastic because you know mixing colors is a really um can be really tricky um, and really rewarding at the same time so we've got another 10 minutes left and what we're going to do is go back through them so now we've got our colors we know what um, we're looking for that variety um of shapes and marks and we're just going to do some quick drawings of the trees so some really nice um, fluid lines and it's up to you I'm just going to use um, a black pen for this so you know feel free if you've got a pencil and you want to draw this is a waterproof pen so I know that I can add some colour to it later on if I need to um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do it nice and small really so really nice and delicate and we're going to identify first of all the trunk so where does that grow um, how does that grow? So we know that it stops here um, shorter than it does on the right hand side. So that's something for us to bear in mind when we're drawing. And again, it's just about drawing what you can see. So I always tackle it as, you know, seeing the trunk first and then um, what, what grows from there and how far up. So this is all I feel that I can see at the bottom part of the tree, kind of the, the first leaf up to there, I think. So that's the bottom part of the tree. And then when we get to the middle, we can see some more branches. So we're going to add those and we're going to pretend there's a line that goes all the way down. In fact, what you can do to make it easier is you can actually draw the line. So just a, a little pencil line just to give you your um, a, a nice um, starting point. And I'm just detailing in some of the branches that I can see. So. And then what I'm gonna do is you can either continue to draw just the shapes that you can see. So if you just get the actual shapes of the tree in, so the leaves, the things that tend to be on the end. So this, this shape here as I go along, nice little movements. And again, we learned 
um, when we first tackled this one, that the leaves, the points of the leaves all hang down. So we know that we've got these little heart shapes. And what's really useful is when you're drawing trees is to remember that you don't need to draw every little bit of detail because, you know, we're not doing such a realistic interpretation. And if you were to we want to really do something ultra realistic, you can always grid the image. Um, and if you've got a device, it can actually grid it for you. So if you check on your iPad or your device, whatever you might have, then it will grid it. And then what you can do is add grid lines to your paper and it'll allow you to be super accurate. Uh, especially if you've got loads of patients, I would never be a super realist painter because I'm too messy. I don't like it looking like a photograph necessarily. Um, what's my third reason? How oh, did I say I'm too messy? I'm too messy again. Just like uh, too free. So again, we're just adding in these little shapes. So we've got a lovely shape of that. And as I say, you know, you can add a little bit of colour, bring it to life slightly, add in those dark tones, you know, and keep building that up. I think we've done quite a lot of this session, actually. I think, you know, to think of we've done colour palettes, we've also done structures and we've looked at really close detail. It's a great little amount of drawing. I'll add some dark tones, especially down by these branches. Don't forget to squint so you can see really where some of these dark colours sit. And again, there's this really nice little shelf life with watercolours where, you know, you can kind of get it wrong for the first 30 seconds and you'll be able to wipe it off, which is so forgiving. So again, just want to try and at least get another one done. So I'm going to move on here in a minute. Um, and don't forget, I don't want you to rush or anything like that but if you are painting or drawing along with us then everything can be found on YouTube and you can pause this and you can play around with it later on in your own time. Nice cup of tea. Okay so I think what we'll do is we'll we'll do this one next we'll skip ahead that's why we've got a few minutes left yeah. so we want to put our want to put our little um, shape in first just because this is so nice oh, it's a little topiary tree isn't it it's got enough of a stem going down and again we want to add the detail in nice and loose And, you know, do this for all of them. Keep going with your worksheets. There's, um, I don't know if I spoke about it before, but there's a, a great little initiative running. It's a 100 day challenge. It's on Facebook. It's totally free. There's loads of really creative people on there and it's just nice to pick ideas from them. And I think this would be an amazing little idea to do for 100 days. Um, I was just speaking to... Uh, Megan a little bit earlier who, who, who uh, runs No Rule Love, helps run the platform and keep everyone um, supported. You know, saying, you know, I've just done lots of wildflowers, which has been just a, a real treat, been learning modes. So I think you get the gist of this. I've not really got much time to complete it. Uh, but this is really something I'd encourage you to do. Go out, find a really lovely tree. 
find something that really, you know, captures your passion. Something that you think, oh, you know, that's lovely. I'd love to explore that. We've got a lovely, I love willow trees as well. It's so beautiful. You might have a tree near you that you really like. So I'm just adding, again, starting with the mid-tones. And then I'm going to go into something quite dark. But I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. <clears throat> I absolutely have. It's something that, to be honest, I always put off exploring trees because it takes a lot of time. And But we've done it. We've cracked it. I mean, what a, a really good session, as I say, to build up your, your little portfolio and to have something that you can look back on and see a real process. So I just want to... Um, Thank you all. Don't forget that there is um, Noro's Champions. So you can go online and you can add that at Noro Champions. Show us your photographs. That'd be amazing. You can re-watch this. It'll be on YouTube. Um, and you can also um, get in contact with the team there on Instagram and um, Twitter. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope that you have a great rest of your evening. Um, yeah, Twitter. Thanks, Megan. Hope you have a great rest of your evening and well done um, for throwing yourself into tonight. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.